Okie doke. And can someone um, uh, unmute and let me know if you see a slide that says housekeeping on the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Jeannie. Um, let me do one more thing. Okay. So um, an overview of what we're gonna be going over tonight. Um, we're going to start with the types of summer travel opportunities that are available through the School of Art and what scholarships are available. Um, we're gonna hear from Augusta Swerker about her experience with um, using travel funding to um, study abroad or to travel um, during, during summertime. Um, and then we're going to hear from um, professors John Blakinger and Jeannie Hewlin about um, their, the courses that they will be teaching in Rome this summer. Um, our professors for that will be teaching in Bali, um, Tom Hapgood and Laura Gray, uh, weren't able to make it tonight, so I'm going to share on their behalf about um, their May intercession class that they're going to be teaching. And then last but not least, we've got um, Katie Sabo from our study abroad office. She's going to share a little bit about um, some of the resources that the study abroad office uh, has available and is, and the scholarships that they offer. Um, so we will dive right into it. Um, so first, there are a couple of different types of summer travel opportunities. Um, like we mentioned, study abroad is a, a big thing. Um, there are uh, study abroad options like Rome and Bali that are directly related to the School of Art because our professors are going to be teaching the, the courses that are offered. But there are also so many more um, study abroad options that you can learn about. And the, the best way to do that is, is um, to reach out to Katie Sabo and her team um, just to learn like pretty much figure out where you want to go and what you want to do and and they will point you in the direction to to make that happen um also uh, another option is self-initiated travel um so this can either be you are traveling um domestically within the United States, or if you want to propose um, a travel opportunity to, to go abroad. Um, and this can be, you can propose to travel for either a residency to like learn a specific skill, um, like learning about uh, the art of, of making washi paper um, in Japan, or um, maybe you wanna do an internship, or um, you have a research project that you're really interested in. Um, you can apply for uh, scholarship funding for any of those options. Um, and Donna Jones, if, if I'm leaving anything out, if you wanna hop in there and, and uh, just add on to it, where feel free to do that. <laughs> Um, so next, wanted to share, uh, we will go over, like I mentioned later in this presentation, um, a, a bit more in depth about the School of Art um, related study abroad options that will be available for this summer. But I wanted to give some um, examples of self-initiated travel and y'all um, apologize, the ice cream truck is going by my house right now. Um, so you might hear that in the background. <laughs> uh, so for undergraduate students, some of the, um, the experiences that they applied for funding for um, in the past were uh, one student did a 10 week um, Paramount production internship program in Los Angeles. Um, another student uh, was awarded funding to do a six week residency um, at Yale Norfolk School of Art. Um, also um, Mount Gretna for a, a six week outdoor painting intensive is a, another really popular thing with our studio art um, undergrads. For, and this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a, a very small amount of examples. Um, so if you are interested in, in just a wider breadth of um, examples of, of what students have done with self-initiated travel funding, reach back out to me and I'm, I'm happy to share more examples. Um, for graduate students, there was a student that um, received funding for a 10-day workshop at the Penland School of Craft. 
Um, this, this next one is the one that I referred back to. A, the, another student uh, received funding for a 30-day washi paper making residency in Japan. Um, and then another um, one was uh, a nine-week program uh, focused on painting and sculpture in Madison, Maine. Um, so lots of opportunities out there. Um, and the application process is, is pretty simple. Um, so speaking of that application process, um, there is one application for all of our summer um, travel opportunities for the this, this, for School of Art scholarships. Um, so you apply, if you wanna go and study abroad, or if you wanna uh, propose a self-initiated travel opportunity, you will use the same application um, to apply for School of Art scholarships. Um, and uh, this red is kind of intense right here, but I really wanted to make it stand out. Um, this, the, our, our uh, study abroad and self-initiated travel um, applications are due on December 1st. Um, so as the, the semester goes on, it's going to, December 1st is going to arrive here pretty quickly. Um, so if you have time now, like the sooner you're able to get that, that application in, um, that's one less thing that you're going to have to think about as you're getting towards final critiques. Um, or when you have research papers due or, or what have you towards the end of the semester. So um, get those applications in. Um, so all that we need on these applications are general information like your name, student ID number, your degree program, um, a proposal of your travel, like 500 words or less, um, where you will include the dates and location of your travel, your current resume, um, anticipated budget and other supporting documents. Um, and pro tip, um, once you create these documents, save them, um, save them and reuse them, um, tweaking things here and there each semester. If you want to um, like apply for another study abroad opportunity, Augustus Worker did two study abroad opportunities. So um, save that language so that you don't have to com start completely from scratch um, each time. And same thing with, you, with your resume. I like when I was a student in undergrad, I tried to update that with all the things that I did that past semester. So I, cause when I'm trying to update that resume, um, sometimes it's hard to, to remember all the things that I have done. So if you update that on a semester basis, it's, it's, it helps so much. Um, and there is a QR code on the screen um, to the scholarship application on our slide room um, webpage. I will also, like after this presentation, I'm gonna send a recording of this presentation as well as several links to everyone um, that is, is here, including the link to the summer um, scholarship application. So uh, if you don't take a picture of this, this QR code, you're fine. Um, there will be other opportunities to, to get that information. Um, any questions so far? I had some questions. Um, yeah, sure. so when I was looking at the study abroad page and I was like noticing all the internships, um, is uh, are the internships associated with the School of Art or is it like a self-initiated thing? So that would be more of, and Donna, please feel free to jump in on this, but that's more of a self-initiated thing. Like you find an internship outside, like with... Um, with I saw there was one in Rome for like marketing, graphic design, like okay. that kind of stuff. So if there's a specific one, like through the, if that was on the study abroad office page, yeah. um, that would be a, a Katie question. But for like local internships or um, like domestic internships within the United States, like if you find those, um, that would be like you apply for that um, internship in the United States. And then you create a budget for like, this is gonna, how much my flight to get to Los Angeles for, for my um, internship is gonna be. And this is what I anticipate um, my lodging cost is going to be. Um, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? 
Okay. Once again, if you have any other questions that come up, please um, do not hesitate to, to let us know. Um, so you've gotten your uh, scholarship application entered um, and it will go through a review process with professors across the School of Art. Um, once they score your applications, um, if you are selected to receive a scholarship, um, I will reach out to you with a, an award letter saying like you were awarded this amount. Um, after that point, you will be required to, if you have not already submitted one for the academic year, you will be required to submit a thank you letter to our generous donors um, who are providing the funding for our School of Art scholarships. It is very important to get in your thank you letter. <laughs> um, your scholarship will not fully be dispersed to you unless you submit that thank you letter. Um, so once again, super important to, to um, submit that. And you submit that thank you letter digitally. Um, like the application process for the scholarship, it is a very simple um, scholar or a thank you letter form. You pretty much just like list out your name and you list out like things that you want to say to the donor, like, thank you so much, um, you're awesome, or what have you. Um, and then that's maybe a couple of other things and you submit it and you upload a photo of yourself um, and that's it. Uh, that is really like a small amount of time for um, generally like a, a couple to a few thousand dollars that you do not have to repay back. Um, such, such a great return on investment. Um, and for graduate students, just another note, um, so for graduate students during the fall and spring semesters, there typically is um, funding that is also available for them to travel through the graduate school. Um, that funding is not available for graduate students during the summer. Um, so we just wanted to, to make sure um, graduate students are aware of that. But graduate students, of course, can, can um, also apply for uh, self-initiated travel and our study abroad options through the School of Art um, are going, going to be open to our graduate students as well. So we'll hear more about that in a minute. Um, so any last questions about those, what, what we covered um, so far before we uh, get to hear from our um, wonderful uh, speaker, Augusta Swerker, about her experiences with summer travel funding? Um, I had a few more questions regarding yeah. the scholarship. So sure. what's like the dollar range of the scholarship? Like, do you request a certain amount or like have, have students been able to get it all paid for before other than like spending money or something? Or is it just like a few thousand or? That's another great question. So um, it's a bit different for study abroad versus self-initiated travel. Um, so for self-initiated travel, you will submit a budget for like what you anticipate all of your, um, your like travel, if you need to uh, take a flight or if you need to rent a car, um, that would be one line item. Uh, if you need lodging for that, that would be another line item. Um, and I can send a sample budget to you if you were interested in, in taking a look at that. I know for me, that's helpful to see an example. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, you submit uh, a sample budget. Um, and then it just also depends on how many people apply. Um, and Donna, feel free to, if you want to jump in on this as well. Um, it depends on how many people apply, um, just for how much, how far uh, what is available is, is distributed. Um, for study abroad, um, there's generally like a set amount that once again, it depends on how many people apply. Um, but anything that you wanna to add to that, Donna? Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, when, when people are filling out their budgets and their proposals, try to be as specific as possible. Um, if you're applying to get funding for any of the study abroad programs, what is amazing and what Katie and her team do along with our wonderful faculty is there's a budget sheet that like 
outlines the the basic program fee, you know, an estimate of what your plane ticket would cost, an estimate of like if you have to get any vaccinations, like what that could cost. Um, so I would really look at those figures. If you are going to pursue something that's a bit more self-initiated, like, you know, let's say you're going to go to Chicago for a month and do an internship there. Um, I would look at what the housing market looks like, you know, for rentals and and just try to be as specific as you can be. Um, you know, there's a big range of funding that may be available, but like Kim has mentioned, and I know other people will share too, um, look at a lot of different funding options because this funding is amazing, but the more awards you can gather together, um, just the better set you're going to be. Because as I'm sure Katie will talk about, there's always an unexpected expense that comes up. And the the more money you have up front to help fund like any tuition costs, fees, that sort of thing, it'll actually just give you a little bit more calmness as you are preparing to go internationally or stay domestic. Um, yeah, and you can always talk to people too. You know, if you're unsure about, you know, I don't know if I need to put a thousand dollars to this or like 900, you know, any little things like that, you know, Kim is here to chat through that with you, faculty are here, current students, you know, peer mentors and things like that too. Thank you. Yeah, another great question, Willow. Do you have any other questions or does anybody else have any other questions? Okay, right on. Oh yeah, wait. I have a question. I was yeah. wondering about scholarships in junction with financial aid, is that adjusted or does it stay the same the way that it's awarded? Donna, do you want to take that one? Sure. And Katie, I might get your help with this too. You know, if you're, let's say you're going to Rome or you're signing up for U of A classes, it's possible that you could also apply for loan money um, that could be used for classes in the summer. You know, like Kim was saying, uh, if you can get most of that through a grant or a scholarship, that means you won't have to pay that back. Um, so the more that you can focus on like getting grant money and scholarship money, the better. Uh, but Katie, is that right? If they're signing up, you know, for courses through the U of A kind of faculty led programs, have y'all found success for students that were, you know, trying to get additional loans for those costs? Yes, and I actually want to expand that a little bit. So it's it's um, uh, enrolling for U of A course credit, like our faculty-led programs, um, but there are additional programs um, as well where you may be earning transfer credit from another institution. The beauty of being a U of A student is we will have you enrolled regardless at the U of A. If you're doing a transfer credit program, we're going to have you enrolled in technically a shell sort of placeholder course. Um, so if, if you're wanting to do a study program, a study abroad program um, that's not through the U of A, but affiliated with us where you earn transfer credit, you'll still be enrolled as a U of A student. So um, you are eligible to continue to receive financial aid um, that you can receive through UA Connect. Um, we're, we always are happy to talk you through that. Um, and then uh, I also want to mention too, if um, if the question is more on the end of do receiving additional scholarships impact my other financial aid, um, definitely make sure to check with the financial aid office um, for any of those kind of more technical aid questions. Thank you so much, Katie. Great questions, y'all. Any other questions at this point? All right, all right. Um, well, I'm going to invite Augusta to um, share with us about her experience in receiving tr uh, summer travel funding to uh, for a variety of things. So, Augusta, take it away. Sure, let me just pull up my presentation. Okay. Hi, I'm Augusta. And for the past three summers, I've had the opportunity to travel and learn with the University of Arkansas. And let me start with saying like, yes, it is September, but summer break and summer break feels really far away right now. But what better way to motivate this next few semesters with summer plans, right? And um, even curating a body of work towards what you could be doing this summer. Um, and also, I want to emphasize that summer opportunities don't end at study abroad. I have gotten to do a 
multi like so many things with the School of Art. And um, I've racked up about almost 14,000 miles of traveling with the School of Art. So there are so many opportunities that you can take advantage of. Um, in the summer of 2021, I was asked to attend Mount Gretna School of Art in Mount Gretna, Pennsylvania. And this was genuinely one of the best decisions and commitments I could have made because it was, it's one thing to attend class every day and crank out six school-based projects, but to be in a community surrounded by people around the same age as me, consistently making work and wanting to be better artists really changed uh, my mindset towards cultivating a studio practice. I spent seven weeks painting in the wilds of Pennsylvania, attending classes, um, intensive classes, painting outside, and then also figure classes. Um, and I still talk to everyone who went to this intensive almost once a week. And we, it's either like, I'll send them a picture and ask them to like, look at a painting or we'll just chat on the phone for three hours. And the summer I even got to visit a few of them um, up in DC. And one of the strangest things that happened while I was there happened the first week, I was setting up an easel and the director of the intensive fell out of the bushes that were right next to me. And he acted like it was really normal. And then was like, do you want some berries that I found while wandering around this park and held out his hand and sure enough, red his hand was like dyed red from really gripping these berries and so naturally I ate them and continued painting but um I highly like recommend attending a residency or an intensive during the summer because it's the best time to really um just focus on like your personal work without like guided uh class projects and um, it was one of like the best kickstarts to what I do now. And so later, um, the next summer in 2022, I traveled to Rome with the School of Art for Study Abroad. And through the Rome Center, we had housing set up. And so we lived in apartments speckled around city center. So we lived in Prati, which was one block away. Like if I walked down the street and I looked to the right, I could see the Vatican walls, which was crazy. Um, and so five weeks, I basically, my commute to school was walking through Vatican City and pretending to be local and drinking cappuccinos. <laughs> and um, it was wonderful. We had, at the time, the classes were drawing and photography based. So instead of showing up to classes at the school, we would have like an organized location to meet at, either like a church, a gallery, a museum, a studio, and we would show up, trickle in and either draw for hours or we would take pictures or we would just giggle <laughs> and talk about, oh my gosh, we're in Rome. This is so exciting. We're learning so much. Um, but learning like about Roman culture, learning about adulthood, learning about just travel and art and being there um, while we were there. I'm really into live music. So we saw a Lord concert, her first ever concert in Rome. We got to see and then we went to Milan one weekend and ended up, ended up seeing Charlie XCX play at a club. And that was really, really fun. Um, we explored the ruins of Ostia Antica, and we spent nights drawing on the Spanish steppes and eating mass amounts of pasta alla matriciana, and it was one of the best summers of just exploring Europe, really, and we would, in the middle of our time there, we went, we like drove up trained up to Florence, stopping in Siena, Arezzo, and Assisi, and doing, like, going to the Uffizi, um, going and seeing Pontormo's Rainbow, I believe, and yeah, next up, this past summer, I, with the Art History and Ceramics Departments, I was able to attend the May intercession in Accra, Ghana. This trip was a little different than the Rome Study Abroad trip, 
because it was a more concentrated group of people and our accommodations were more um were all like planned for us for the most part we stayed in hotels um our trip was two-ish weeks and we had the most wonderful guide Kwesi and our bus driver Alex who introduced us to Ghanaian culture and for the most part this was everyone's first time in Ghana so it was really really exciting we would visit galleries and residencies and artist studios and the artists would meet us in the galleries and talk to us about their work where they're being represented um where their studio is sometimes like in this instance we were in the gallery but their studio was also in the same area so we got to go visit their studio um we went on two excursions out of Accra we went to Cape Coast and Kumasi where in Kumasi, we visited Can UST, a university who students, ceramic students, students prepared a show for us. And we got to talk with them about their work and what it was like to go to school um, in Kumasi. And then one of my favorite memories was while in Cape Coast, um, they have these vendors or not. Yes, they have these vendors everywhere, like street vendors. And um, we found one selling coconuts and I bodied that coconut so fast um I think I probably ate 15 coconuts on this trip and it was one of the greatest moments of my life just getting handed a coconut from the street vendor and then drinking it all and then um them handing it back and then them giving us the meat from it it was wonderful if you I I would talk about it for so much longer if I could but this is after the trip we got back. I had five days to pack up my apartment and drive to Richmond, where I then interned for the VMFA, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, which was um, another uh, experience that was funded um, by the university. Um, I acted as a curatorial intern under their, one of their American curators, Dr. Leo Maisel. Um, Leo used to teach at the University of Arkansas. And so then they created this internship to keep um, everyone in touch and give students experiences in curatorial spaces. And so at the VMFA, I they're expanding in a couple of years. And so with this expansion, part of their galleries are going to shut down. So with that, the permanent collection is going to have to is going to go on a traveling exhibition. So I worked directly with specific pieces to build research for those pieces. So then when they go on these traveling exhibitions and they have exhibition catalogs, um, the pieces that I worked with will have like splur like little blurbs of what they're about, the history behind them. So I worked on building research for that exhibition catalog. I also worked with other interns to build, um, to go through like different, Virginia artists that were had pieces bought by the VMFA during their biennials. I also attended exhibition openings and um, I worked with so many amazing people on this um, intensive or in this internship. And um, it was really a wonderful time. So if you're interested in applying for summer funding in residency wise, study abroad wise, internship wise, you totally should. If you have any questions, please free feel, to, feel free to ask me because I can answer them. <laughs> this is a good time to do that too. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Augusta. Ah, so, so wonderful. Any questions for Augusta? Or if you want to email me questions privately, that is totally cool too. I am pretty good at checking my email. Um, we can talk about the like VMFA internship because I have a lot to say about it. It was genuine. I have so much research from that. It's great. Um, but also just like study abroad or Mount Gretna because all of those things are going to be available next summer too. So yeah, reach out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Oh, Jeannie, did you just have your, were you just unmuted? I, I was just going to say, John and I do not want to follow Augusta. <laughs> that was just so fantastic. <laughs> yes, that was, that was. 
Um, <laughs> well, we, we appreciate you, Augusta. Um, and I just want to reiterate, like, um, summer travel, like, as a studio art undergrad, um, I also did some, some study abroad and, and uh, domestic travel and, and just uh, now, like Katie and I were talking about earlier, um, now is the time to do it. Um, when you're in undergrad or in grad school, um, it, as you get older, um, it becomes, and you, if you choose to have a family um, with jobs and things like that, it becomes harder and harder to find like a three to five week period of time, of consecutive time um, in which to travel um, to further your practice or to, to do a longer internship, um, to make more connections. So um, if you are at all interested, like I highly, highly recommend it. Now is the time. Um, and any way that we can help you to, to do that, please let us know. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Jeannie and John Blankinger. Um, if y'all want to share a little bit about Rome for 2024. Sure. So um, I'll go first and then Jeannie will chime in. Uh, my name is John Blankinger. I'm a professor of contemporary art in the School of Art. Um, and I'm also director of the Art History Program. And uh, I will be teaching a course in Rome uh, next summer. And I've kind of tentatively given the course the title uh, Italian Art, Past, Present, Future. And I'm going to be very um, boring. <laughs> Unlike Augusta, I'm going to be boring. And I'm going to just uh, read the uh, kind of course description that I have put together. Uh, Rome is the eternal city, an enduring site of cultural power for millennia. And yet artists and architects have continually reimagined Rome, reinventing the city and its visual culture in surprising new ways across its long history. This course explores how artists and architects have reinterpreted, reinvented, and reconceived the art of the past in Italy. Some have hoped to bring back the glory of antiquity. Others have reacted against traditional culture, seeking to overthrow the burden of the past by forging a radical future. In considering these varied models of art historical time, our course will focus on case studies spanning the history of art in Rome from the Renaissance to the present. Topics include the revival of antiquity in the High Renaissance, the Baroque and Mannerist challenge to Renaissance rationality, the revolutionary aims of Italian futurism, the surrealistic explorations of metaphysical art, the rise of arte povera, poor art, and aesthetics of scarcity after the Second World War, the influence of Rome on artists abroad from Cy Twombly and Robert Rauschenberg to Louise Bourgeois and Anna Mendieta, and Rome's shifting relationship to an increasingly global contemporary art world. We will explore how the past is constantly reworked for new ends, how power and politics continually structure visual culture and experience, how memory as well as forgetting inspires art movements, and how artists today engage with Rome. So the concept is really like survey of Italian art, Renaissance to the present. My own expertise is really 20th century and uh, 21st century contemporary art, but I have also taught uh, history of art uh, in Italy uh, from the Renaissance on. So I've taught uh, you know, mannerism and the Baroque and different uh, periods of art history. So we're going to kind of survey all of it um, instead of just, you know, focusing on one kind of discrete block of time, uh, the goal will be to see as much as we can. So each class will be uh, focused on a site visit. And I think Augusta shared a bit about how that, um, that worked when uh, she was studying in Rome. Uh, so we'll see uh, historic sites, the Vatican Museum, um, different, uh, you know, churches, Renaissance and Baroque churches and different sites. We'll have excursions to uh, Florence, to Venice, to Naples, hopefully all three of them, um, with the hope of seeing, uh, you know, the huge wealth of really iconic, amazing art in Florence. I mean, works of art that all of you, even if you don't know, uh, that you probably have, uh, you know, studied in some way, you would definitely recognize things like Michelangelo's uh, David or Botticelli's Primavera painting. 
Uh, and then we will also go to Venice and experience the Venice Biennale, this um, incredible uh, contemporary art uh, fair in which different countries have p pavilions and are represented. Uh, and so we'll immerse ourselves in uh, global contemporary art and see as much as we can. Uh, and then we also will head to Naples and uh, visit Pompeii. And Jeannie, you can uh, say more about that experience. Um, and then in addition, I mean, there's a whole host of contemporary modern museums in Rome, art galleries that we'll visit. So the focus is really on field trips. That's kind of, you know, when in Rome, you should make use of the city. Uh, so that's what we will be doing. It, you know, it won't be a kind of traditional art history course that's focused on uh, reading and writing. There will be, you know, short texts that are relevant. We'll have a lot of discussions, but a lot of that will all take place uh, kind of more experientially in the museum, in the gallery, at different historic sites. Uh, so that's my overview of our, uh, the art history course um, in Rome. And I'll pass it to you, Jean. Yeah, great. Um, so I am Jeannie Hewlin. I'm a professor in uh, studio art, but I teach ceramics specifically and other things. Um, I'm studio program director also. Um, and uh, I am so excited to go to Rome and I am so excited to go to Rome with John. Like that's just going to be so amazing. Um, we are going to try to be out as much as possible and not sitting anywhere, walking around, looking at things um, and like really just taking on every single thing we possibly can. I think Augusta was a great beginning to explain this. So I've been to Rome, but I've never, and been to Italy and been to Naples and been to Venice. And I actually saw the Venice Biennale in 1995 before any of you were born. But I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but that was my senior year in high school, and I went to the Kansas City Art Institute, and um, and I traveled Europe, and that was the first time I'd ever lit like gone overseas, um, and I was three weeks all over the all over Europe, and it was life changing. That was the that was the sum summer before my last year of college. And I came back and my work was just totally different and it was amazing. And so, and so since then I like, I've dedicated myself to travel abroad. I've lived in uh, Taiwan, um, in uh, Taiwan for my first sabbatical in 2009. And then I lived in West Africa, Ghana with um, my family. So that's the other thing as a Fulbright scholar, that you just you, this the thing you'll get the bug once you travel once you're you are like you're sick forever you know you want to keep going so anyways just more props for traveling abroad also increases your like understanding of other cultures because you're also extremely mindful of your of yourself in those spaces and otherness is something that is really important to actually have an experience with so anyways I'm a, a proselytizer when it comes to travel. So um, <clears throat> this, this, the, 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 the pro what we're going to be doing as a studio person is really, I want to focus more on what you like are exploring. And so it's going to be a lot more about prompts. So we'll be in these spaces on our travels. Um, you'll learn some historical knowledge, which is also kind of amazing for me where, and then um, at the same time, I will then be listening to you. Like what, what do you do if you're a painter and there's access to some aspects of painting? I want you to be painting. If you're, a, uh, you can't like clay is going to be real difficult, but we're going to work this out. We'll definitely go to Creta and do some stuff where we can try to make it work for everybody. So prompts are going to be really based on your own like practice. So it might be photography. I'll push you when it comes to performative aspects of things. Um, but a lot of it is going to be really absorbing and, and then understanding what these things that you're seeing and then creating something like basically it can be spon spontaneity the whole time. It, it, but, but we'll talk about practice, just making things happen and, um, and making things that, that will be um, maybe even things that don't come home. Cause you can't like 
pack it all, you know, if it's not three dimensional. So it's really going to be prompt based. And so um, I'm really interested in what it is to experience as a global citizen or thinking about your global citizenship and also the physicality of yourself in these spaces. And so we'll talk about the body, like the body itself and in context of bodies of work and your own body. And so, um, so, well, that's a lot of the, the general. So the other thing is, is that this is not, this is not a graduate level class and this is not a beginning level class. This is a class <laughs> and everyone will participate at the level of their own interest. If you're an art historian that you're going and you're worried or nervous about, um, about like a studio practice, don't worry. We're all going to, we're all going to learn together. That's what this is all about. And so even if your practice was more writing based, where it's something that's pushing yourself beyond where you're thinking about writing as a object versus writing as a scholarly text, we will explore that. Like, so anything is available to us as a medium, as artists. And so I would want to help you push yourself in a practice to understand that contemporary art in particular is vast. And so like, therefore you can choose what your medium is and your medium could be, um, I don't, the dust for every footprint that you walk through the city. It can be, you know, uh, it can be pictures of keyholes. I don't know, it can be anything. So, um, and we'll talk about that and building that body over the course of the um, five weeks and, and it can shift and it can change. It's really about explain, expanding your conceptual ability to think um, think really outside of the box. And I actually think that sometimes making really bad things is extremely helpful also. So um, that is just as important and bad is also what is bad. So we'll just go through all of that and talk through all different ways of making art and and really making it work. So questions for us. And once again, like Augusta mentioned, if you want to ask a question via email and a follow-up email from this conversation, I'll make sure to send out the email addresses for Professors Hewlin and Blakinger, um, just so you can uh, email them directly if you don't feel like asking a question during this session. Um, it is totally fine. Yeah, and I really wanna make sure that we can get people to go to Rome, right? So these, this funding is here for you to apply. Even if you hear of other friends that are like, I don't really need money to go to apply, I mean, to go to Rome, they really, we want you all to be applying through this, um, through this application process that's really important to us. We need to know who wants to go. You know, if you don't know how you're gonna fund it, don't worry, we'll figure that out. That's like what our goal is going to be. There are some other, I'm sure, um, I'm sure Katie's going to talk about the Gilman um, and some other opportunities for funding. And so, um, but we want to, we want to, we want you to come to Rome with us. So we'll figure it out. Uh, you know, I was a poor art student and that was somebody else that took me to Rome. And so I understand what it is about trying to figure out if I can, go to like, do I pay rent? Do I eat? Do I, is it rice today? Or, or, you know, all that stuff. I understand what that feels like, but like any way to get you a, like where you can still eat, but at the same time, get you to Rome, you, you've got to do it. That's it. Or Bali or wherever else. Yeah. Um, so I have a quick question. Um, so when I'm on the Hogs Abroad website and I'm looking at like the information sheet, it says the area of studies and it just says internship in there. So are there internships I can apply for through the university or do I have to find my own? And then I that's why I was I was kind of confused. I guess when I first saw it and I saw like, you know, fine art, graphic design, internship on there. I guess it might have read it as like one thing. Um, but yeah, I don't, that was my question. <laughs> I, I think I might be able to help clarify a little bit on that too. Um, there are a few different application pages on Hogs Abroad. There's 
Um, okay. one that's um, more specific to the summer open campus program. There's one that's more specific to the specific internship program that we have during the summer. And then of course there's the studio art program. Um, so our summer internship in Italy program at the Rome Center is um, a, a very specific um, opportunity that combines the first five week sort of general open campus program um, and then during the second half of the summer, an internship placement. Um, I would say that those specific internship placements that we have at our Rome Center at this time, um, much of them are a lot more marketing focused um, or business project management. Um, there are a, other internship opportunities, um, though, outside of, of that program. Um, and the search tool on our um, Hogs Abroad portal helps um, identify those opportunities abroad that are through both our U of A programs and programs that we partner with as well. I see, thank you, that's super helpful. Thank you. That is all of what this session is about. Great questions, y'all. Any, any other questions? All right, all right. Um, Y'all bear with me, I'm gonna share my screen again, hopefully. Okay, do you see on the screen a slide that says Rome scholarships and application dates? Okay, I see a thumbs up, thank you. Um, so if you are interested in studying in Rome this summer, um, the application deadline for uh, scholarships from the School of Art is due on December the 1st. Um, the application to the actual Rome program experience is due on February the 1st of 2024, um, and the study abroad office scholarship is due on February the 15th, which I know Katie will talk more about in a minute, um, but just wanted to share those dates. Um, and those dates are going to be um, exactly the same for the Bali experience. Um, so if there aren't any additional questions, um, I will go ahead and move to um, our next section. So um, professors Tom Hapgood and Laura Gray uh, were not able to join us tonight, but I am going to um, share on their behalf. So um, for Bali, this is going to be a three hour May intercession course. Um, either as for as an English course or as an arts course. Um, I've got the email addresses for professors Hapgood and Gray listed on the screen and we'll share that information out um, after this presentation. Uh, no language uh, prerequisite. Um, housing students are going to stay in hotels or institute housing with dual occupancy. Um, and here's a, an overview of, of the Bali course. So Bali is gonna be focused on sustainability and art. Um, and the overall description is explore the ways art, production methods, sustain, sustainable farming and small businesses or big corporations are tackling some of the greatest social or environmental challenges faced by the country within the fashion and clothing industry a central component of our global and cultural immersion experience. The course will serve as an opportunity to introduce concepts of art, such as art production and the luxury for this, consumerism and labor, as these are used and apply for apply particularly to women, directly or indirectly related with the ecosystem of best land management and resources practices in Jakarta and Bali. We will study the impacts of corporate models, social innovation, new venture development, and work in our artisanal workshops guided by traditional production of indigo and textiles. Um, if y'all will bear with me for one more second. Um, 
there's a little bit more I'm, I can share with you. So some additional notes um, from the professors. Uh, we'll be working on site with smaller within the smaller community to learn about globalism and sustainability with partners in NGOs in Bali during the two weeks of May intercession. This will give us hands-on experience in co-ops, markets, schools, and community centers to better understand what culture, art, arts, and economies are like in the country. The exchange opportunities within the experience will be of high value because we are keeping our student participate, participants in a small select group of no more than 20 so that students will have more one-on-one -on -one time with community members. We'll visit temples, ceremonies, mountain towns, small fishing villages on the ocean, as well as an island and rice terraces unique to this landscape. So you will see and do lots lots um, that just traveling as a tourist would not afford. Um, we're planning on an information and pizza dinner session in person in a couple of weeks to meet students and share more information. And um, she'll add any more uh, emails to our list that, that you can gather. Uh, no, sorry, <laughs> I'll stop reading at that point. <laughs> I think that, that was a note for me. <laughs> um, so let me... Uh, Bear with me, let me go back to my screen so I can see it. I apologize, y'all. I'm used to having like three screens. And so when I'm back to one, now I'm, uh, it's gonna be great in a second. Okay, um, y'all still see the PowerPoint on the screen, right? Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, so, um, so some more information about Bali, um, like just like with the uh, Rome scholarship and application dates, um, the School of Art scholarship is due on December the first. Um, the program application for the actual Bali experience is due on February the 1st, and the Study Abroad Office Scholarship is due on February the 15th. Um, so that's, that's some information about Bali. Um, and if you would like additional information or have more questions, um, like I said, I'll share out the email addresses for the professors that are teaching, and you are welcome to directly email them with those specific questions. Okay. Um, and now um, we have our wonderful Katie Sabo from our study abroad office to share more information about additional opportunities and scholarships that are available through the study abroad office. So I'll stop sharing my screen and Katie, if you want to take it away. All right, wonderful. So I will share my screen here and uh, mostly what I want to cover with you today is guide you to a few resources um, on our website and tell you um, about a few more scholarship opportunities, um, as well as just some general good information about how applications work um, and make sure that you have um, good resources to reach out to in our office as well. Um, so for scholarship opportunities for study abroad programs, any credit bearing study abroad, whether you are interested in going to Rome or Bali this summer with um, U of A faculty leaders, um, or if you've identified an additional um, summer opportunity through one of our um, partner providers where you'd be earning transfer credit or, or those types of opportunities as well, um, you'll have a U of A study abroad application. Um, and by enrolling properly at the U of A for study abroad, you are eligible to apply for study abroad scholarships. So in addition to the excellent opportunities that you have through the School of Art um, for um, summer travel or self-initiated funding, U of A study abroad scholarships um, are available through my office and through a few additional resources on campus as well. So from our main study abroad uh, page, We've got a link directly here to our scholarships page. Um, this kind of talks through um, sort of the three different steps I usually recommend when thinking about uh, piecing together funding for study abroad. So um, the first is thinking about most of the scholarships or financial aid that you could typically expect to receive during the term that you're planning to study abroad. 
Um, so if you have federal financial aid that you could receive during the summer um, or other funding that you can access during the summer, you'll be able to use that for study abroad as well because you'll be enrolled um, as a student. If you are planning to do a semester program, there are opportunities to do an entire semester abroad as well. Um, same thing, if you've got scholarships and aid that you are eligible to receive during that term, you'll be able to access that still through your student account through UA Connect. Additional scholarships specifically for study abroad um, that you'll find in our application portal include both the Office of Study Abroad Scholarship through my office, um, and then another application that includes some other study abroad scholarships across campus as well. The applications are a little bit different than the School of Art funding, um, and they're all through our um, application portal. So the Office of Study Abroad Scholarship through my office, um, our application deadline for summer, um, as you've seen, is February 15th. Um, those applications, I'll say our application deadline is a little later than some others, and you will hear back from our application um, decisions a little later than others, because we typically have a large group of students to review, and we typically try to award funding to students who have uh, demonstrated financial need, who have never had the opportunity to study abroad before or travel outside the country. Um, and who make a great justification for the program um, that, that you've chosen to apply to. Um, our application includes a brief statement of purpose um, where you'll write about the program that you've chosen and how it meets your personal, academic, and professional goals. And then you'll also write a brief statement of purpose, or a brief, I'm sorry, um, financial circumstances statement. Um, where you can articulate additional um, information that you'd like us to know. A lot of students work while they're um, at school as well to help support um, their, their education, or a lot of students may not have additional support from uh, family, right? Or some students may not receive um, any financial aid or scholarships. So those kind of additional circumstances um, that you'd like to um, disclose to a scholarship review committee are particularly helpful during that review as well. Um, aside from that, you're really just filling out some information about the program that you've chosen um, and uploading a copy of your transcript. And then you'll request a recommendation letter as well. So that recommendation letter can come from any instructor who's taught you. Um, you very likely have some really excellent resources that you know well through the School of Art who want to support you as well. Um, so think uh, ahead of time when you're planning to apply for a study abroad scholarship. Um, think ahead of time um, about who you want to request that recommendation letter from and give them some good information about what you're applying for um, and the scholarship you're applying for. Generally, I think when requesting a recommendation letter, it's good to give that person at least a few weeks of time to write that um, letter for you. And you'll request it directly through your application once you've started a scholarship application. So that's kind of basically what the scholarship application looks like in our portal. Um, the good news is that second application that includes some other departmental resources on our campus here is quite similar. So what we mentioned earlier about saving work that you've previously done to kind of help yourself out for applying for other opportunities, that absolutely applies here too. So this scholarship application um, that's separate from the Office of Study Abroad scholarship application includes several additional resources. So um, there are some specific departmental resources of students um, who may also be minoring in African-American studies or um, in another area within Fulbright. Um, some of those programs do have additional study abroad scholarship funds. Uh, the Cleveland C. Burton's uh, uh, Undergraduate Fellowship in International Studies. Um, there are a few different types of scholarships within that specific funding resource, and one of them will consider any Fulbright College student who meets their eligibility requirements. There are also uh, a few resources for longer term study abroad as well, specifically for longer term. Um, for students planning to study abroad for an entire academic year, um, Fulbright College um, has an endowed um, fellowship um, available that you can apply for. Wow, what an incredible opportunity to spend a full academic year abroad. 
Um, the Sturgis International Fellowship um, as well for students who are um, in undergraduate in the Fulbright Honors Program or who are graduate students are eligible to apply for a Sturgis International Fellowship. That scholarship seeks to support students who are planning to do a longer term study, so at least a full summer term um, and, of course, a semester or longer. Um, that scholarship um, specifically seeks to support students who are doing internship or research um, based uh, experiences as well. Um, so a residency or something like that absolutely would be could be considered for the Sturgis International Fellowship. Um, and then, of course, if you are enrolled in the honors program, um, the honors college study abroad grant falls within this application as well. The Honors College um, does have a few actually earlier priority deadlines for summer too. So that final deadline for um, most of those other scholarships that are outside of our specific application um, is February 1st, a little bit earlier than ours. Um, but the Honors College does review by a few earlier priority deadlines. So if you're enrolled in Honors and want to apply for the grant um, for a summer opportunity, um, there are three priority deadlines for summer, October 1st, uh, November 1st, and February 1st, and then the final deadline um, to be considered for summer funding through honors would be that final February 1st deadline. Um, I also want to call out the Janetta Cross Brazil Study Abroad Scholarship. That is a scholarship that is um, available uh, campus-wide for undergraduate students um, through the Student Affairs Department um, that specifically seeks to support students who have been historically um, and, and currently underserved um, in education abroad. So that includes a lot of um, populations. That includes first-generation college students, um, students from racial or ethnic minority backgrounds, um, so the Janetta Cross Brazil uh, Award um, awards, I believe, two students um, each year. Um, they do have just one deadline each year, and it's um, in February. But this application would help you automatically apply for any of those that you may be eligible for. Um, also on this page, we've got some really great resources um, for uh, scholarships outside of the U of A too. And I do want to also call attention to some resources for graduate students. Um, I mentioned the Sturgis International Fellowship, of course, for graduate students, but graduate students are also eligible to apply for the Office of Study Abroad Scholarship. So um, our scholarship is available for both um, graduate and undergraduate students um, applying for credit bearing study abroad. In addition to that, so there's your current aid that you could receive during your study abroad term. There's additional study abroad specific funding through departments on our campus. And then there's also uh, awards outside of the U of A. Um, so at this page, we've highlighted several different opportunities um, in a few different buckets, some for studying critical need languages, some for very specific locations, but a few in particular that I want to call out um, the Fund for Education Abroad has several different scholarships under that umbrella. Um, and they've got an application cycle for summer programs, and they've also got an application cycle for fall or spring programs. Um, that application um, automatically helps you apply for um, a, a few different resources under that um, umbrella application, like I mentioned. That includes specific funding um, for students applying with uh, programs that are partnered already with the Fund for Education Abroad, um, and it does include um, resources for students um, studying in specific areas. There are some more location-based um, scholarships within that um, opportunity, um, and it's, as well as some more specific um, areas of study um, or student demographics, too. And then I also want to highlight the um, Benjamin A. Gilman International Scholarship Program. Um, that is a nationally competitive scholarship um, as well um, that funds, um, there's two separate application cycles, one in October and one for March. Both of those application cycles um, help support students who are applying for summer programs. So there's two opportunities each year to apply for funding through the Gilman program. The Gilman program um, it seeks to support students with high financial needs. So students who are eligible for a federal Pell Grant are eligible to apply for the Gilman program. Um, and the scholarship awards up to $5,000 um, for students to use towards program costs. 
Um, there are a few additional resources within the Gilman program as well. So they will award um, supplemental funding for students who are also studying a critical need language um, with their abroad program. Um, they'll award up to an additional $3,000. And if students are doing any sort of STEM related um, research in association with their program, um, and that's a very broad um, definition too that they've got for STEM related resource uh, or research, um, they'll award an additional $1,000. Um, so the Gilman program is a really fantastic uh, opportunity, nationwide scholarship opportunity um, to support students um, who are eligible for a Pell Grant. Um, we host several application workshops throughout the application cycle, um, and this link that you'll find um, on our portal as well um, will lead you to some more resources um, and how to kind of get connected um, and get started there. I also want to very quickly um, point out one more resource um, that I'd love for you to be aware of. So this is back from our main um, website. Here at the top, we've got some good information about how to reach us. Um, you can call our office, you can email us, you can come to drop-ins. We have drop-in hours every Wednesday afternoon from 1 to 4.30. So please come chat with me if you want to learn more about study abroad scholarships um, or program opportunities. Um, you are more than welcome any Wednesday afternoon to come and chat with me. Um, you just drop in, sign in at the front desk, um, and I meet with folks as quickly as I possibly can. Um, this website that we've got linked also from our main front page at the top there, this is just kind of a good getting started resource. Um, so as you're interested in exploring your opportunities for study abroad, both the incredible opportunities that we have through our faculty um, and through the Rome Center, as well as some other opportunities um, at uh, uh, program providers and institutions that we're partnered with, um, this site really kind of helps guide your search. So it um, brings you through exploring those options and understanding what scholarships and financial aid are available for you, um, making an appointment if you'd like to schedule a 30-minute appointment with, um, with me um, for, for study abroad advising, how that whole application process works, some resources for preparing um, in addition to our pre-departure orientation meetings um, that we host each semester. Um, and then how to engage once you come back. When you come back, um, we love for you to um, get involved in outreach, um, just like um, Augusta showed, shared all of her excellent experiences with us. Um, so this is kind of helps show a roadmap um, for study abroad opportunities um, and how we'd love for you to engage at every step of, um, along the way. Um, so please don't hesitate to ask any questions that you may have as well, um, and I'll stop sharing for now so I can see everyone's faces too. And real quick, I want to piggyback on, on uh, with one thing on um, some about the topic of resources. Um, so if you are interested in, in studying abroad or applying for a self-initiated travel opportunity, but you don't feel like you are the strongest writer, or if you don't have a resume, um, please reach out, like email me at kimc at uark.edu. We definitely have resources on campus to help you review um, your writing, uh, to strengthen those proposals or to help you in crafting a resume. Um, so just know that that assistance is available with that. Um, and I'd be happy to point you in the direction of those resources. Any questions for Katie? All right, all right. And then uh, once again, I will make sure to share Katie's email address as well as um, links to, to uh, lots of things that she talked about with you so that you can review those resources and reach out to Katie directly if you have additional questions after this session. Um, well, last but not least, um, I wanted to tee up another opportunity to learn about study abroad for this summer. Um, I'm not going to share my screen because it's just for one slide, <laughs> but in um, October, on October the 25th, it's a Wednesday, 
Um, from 10.30 to 12.30 p.m., we are going to have a study abroad fair specifically for the School of Art in the Studio and Design Center lobby. Um, so with this, uh, it will be an in-person opportunity for you to learn more about the study abroad opportunities in Rome and Bali this summer um, through the School of Art. Uh, you'll also be able to meet um, our wonderful professors that will be teaching in person, learn more about the classes that they offer. Like after this session, if you continue thinking about this and you have a question that comes up, um, you can ask that question. And then also uh, Katie and I will be there to talk about um, the breadth of, of scholarships that will be available and there will be snacks. Um, so those are all great things. Uh, and any, any, uh, any final questions before we come to a close? Okay, well, thank you so much to all of our wonderful speakers. Um, we really, we appreciate you so much. Um, and thank you to everyone for attending. Um, have a great rest of your evening.